Tonight, oh God, the very first story is going to get your boyfriend riled up. I already know it. Um, tonight we have pretty much, we got another collection of people behaving badly, but mostly just, this is a whole lot of consequences be damned, where people do not think about the next step in what's going to happen here. Oh boy, I th suppose we should get this underway. Let's see, hopefully this will work. I hope. Uh, is it gonna work? Er, uh, maybe? I'm gonna have to adjust something. Oh shit, I didn't think of that, did I? Okay. Well, I'm not brilliant. We already know this. I'll just have to improvise. Uh, I can't right. see the Macarena I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Macarena. I. I didn't plan very well. All right, let's hope this works. Oh, lucky for you, I have a hippo that can do the Macarena. Each week, Catherine goes out worldwide interwebs. This is not working very well. Finds all sorts of horrible stuff. <laughs> Makes it back to us for a little second. We like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? We'll have to get this fixed for next time. I'm sorry. I fucked up. Oh well. Live everybody. Live everybody. I don't have a little live everybody cue card anymore. <laughs> it, well, I do, but I wrote a bunch of phone numbers on it. But here, here's the good, the good part this week. You'll be able to. Actually, I, can you guys read the stories at all? I don't know. I can't read them from my end. We'll see. Um, so speaking about your boyfriend, he loved that story about the guy who fought the bear. Did. Well, this is just going to encourage the poor bastard further. Oh, good. That's what he needs. More encouragement. And that's the wrong story. I'm having just a wonderful time this week. So, yeah, um. <laughs> Bartender tells, oh, good lord, get out of the way. Professional, everybody. Um, uh, Bear obeys bartender's command, leaves Juno Bar. Only all unwelcome bar guests for this obliging. A black bear walked into the bar at the Alaskan Hotel in downtown Juno on Monday night. Bartender Ariel Svetliv McCarthy says she freaked out and yelled, No bear, get out! No, you can't be in here. And the bear complied, leaving the Bad bar bear. one second. The bear left. I don't know where to start. Do I start with, it sounds like the beginning of a bad joke. A black bear walks into a bar. <laughs> Do I start with, clearly this bar is racist. And if a polar bear walked into the bar, it would have been cool, but not a black bear. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No bears allowed. <laughs> See how many others shared our childhood on that one. <laughs> You're not a crowd. I just want to point out that the bear was black. Yeah. What, what polar bears don't go to bars? <laughs> What's uh, up with that? I just, I love the fact that the bear went, oh, sorry. It just kind of laughed. Like, my bad. My bad, yo. Sorry, I didn't know. I, I mean,. I guess what else are you going to do? <laughs> my reaction would be, would be like, bad bear, bear, no, no. <laughs> I think my reaction would be to scream in a lot more high pitched and less dignified manner. Yeah, she, she's got, you know, she's got some little steel going on her just to be able to go get the fuck out, bear. To like bear I'm kind of picturing her bopping him on the nose with a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> I'm just being like, Sorry. Listen, Bear, there are no picnic baskets in here. We've told you once, we've told you a thousand times. You sure? Can I just check again, just to be honest? You sure? You're not allowed to wear that jaunty little hat in here either. <laughs> All right, uh, just want to double check. Can you guys read the screen better than you have been able to before? I'm hoping it's, it's looking better. I'm trying. <laughs> well, Junior, go home, Bear. You are drunk. Of course. Oh, technology. Nope. Oh, fuck. Not really. Fuck. Well, the title helps. Ah, I'll keep working on it, I suppose. Um. 
Okay, so we, we can't. It's not the technology. They just can't read. Ooh. Try a zoom in. You know what? I might do that. Let's 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 see if I can. Now nah, I'll, I'll fuck with it later. We'll we'll have to do it next week. I'm not gonna do it in the middle of the show. Um. So we've had in our it's the 21st century now, and we would like to think that. Do you guys know what a lawn jockey is? And I'm hoping very few of you do because that would make me happy. Okay, you do? Some of you don't. Ah, oh, thank God. That makes me happy. Good. A lawn jockey is a very, 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 very racist statue that showed up on a lot of people's front lawns. And um, it was it was normally tended to be black. And it was one of those horrible stereotypes. Or for those of you in England, do you know what a gollywog is? That one's kind of, yeah, you know, you, you've heard of a, yeah, Tara knows the gollywog. You know what a, yeah, gollywogs are a little bit worse. Gollywogs are a very, it was a beloved character from children's tales about a super racist little black doll. And the black, the doll wasn't racist. The portrayal of the doll was racist. Uh, so and I, you'd think it's the 21st century we're enlightened we're beyond those kind of things it doesn't happen anymore and you know what you would be absolutely 100% completely wrong from Tesco Tesco sorry over gay best friend doll <laughs> Retailer's website said the inflatable doll would, quote, tell you if your bum looks big and was a suitable gift for young children. Comes a day after the retailer was forced to remove a Halloween costume called, quote, Psycho Ward from its shelves. On its website, Tesco said the, quote, inflatable gay best friend and gay is got a little asterisk instead of an A. Just, that's a bad word. Well, no, it's just if they call it G asterisk Y, they're not actually saying gay. So it could be an inflatable boy best friend. And if it's a kid, Coin you could get them a goy best friend um, who doesn't eat matzah. It's the gay best friends that are in season, the description of the product said. Although not that much can be said for his own attire, your inflatable gay best friend is ready to give you fashion advice, tell you if your bum looks uh, looks big, and bitch about everyone who doesn't wear Jimmy Choo's. Three or four year olds don't know what Jimmy Choo's are, and if they do, there's something very like. Yeah, your kid should not know what a Jimmy Choo is. If your kid yeah, knows what a Jimmy Choo is, rethink your values. Your family's a little messed up. Yeah, I mean, unless your kid is Surrey Cruz. Your three-year-old doesn't know what Jimmy Choo's are. Did, They're not going to understand that joke. Did no one think... I, well, I guess I just answered my own question there. Because this is one of those consequences kind of things. If you sell this kind of thing, your ass is getting boycotted to hell and back. You're not coming... And this is after they already had the Psycho Ward costume. And yes, later on this month, we will have another... Worst costumes for Halloween that's coming, but I yeah. I already put one up on Twitter. That you did, yeah. But I just with all of the lawsuits that go on right now, let's not even think about right and wrong. Let's not let's put that aside. Let's think entirely in practical terms, okay? Right and wrong aside, just for a business sense of it. Yeah, forget the morality. Let's just think in terms of stupidity and litigiousness, right? Like, you know, like a like a company would do. Um, morality, that doesn't make us money. No, put that aside just for a second. Could, why did an executive think, wait a minute. We're going to get sued, aren't we? See, the thing is, I would get this as like an adult gag gift. Yeah, maybe. But for ages three and up. Like, I would, I would totally expect this to be sold at like Spencer Gifts. Do you really want your kid going to sleep at night, cuddling up to a, a stereotype like this? Now, Fred, now I do understand that, you know, you know, it. it OK, people are cool. I let one, I let the an inflatable one sleep with my kid. But I think you need to think a little bit broader than that. 
I don't think you should be letting your children go to bed with inflatable anything. Yeah, no, that's probably not a good idea. That's how they wind up pregnant at 12. Did I just miss a page? No. First, you get them the inflatable sleeping with toys, and then they get totally promiscuous, and then they're pregnant at 12. Yeah, I missed a page. How did this... What are inflatable toys that you take to bed usually for? Well, this one doesn't have any holes. But I was making a joke, damn it. Try to keep up. This one doesn't have any holes. Are we sure? Are we sure? By uh, the way. Oh, God, I hope not. All right. So. Speaking of should have thought this shit through. Um, oh, they are so mad at me tonight. Bribes happen. Let's be honest. We're we're in it. We're in a society where people will bribe other people to get shit done. Can't pretend like it doesn't. But you would think you would. If you're going to stick your neck out, if you're going to risk legal action over something you do, you do it over large amounts of money and important things like, um, you know, losing a truckload of, of electronics or something or or looking the other way. For, you'd, you'd lose it. You'd, get, you'd risk it for something that would actually be worthwhile. I'm not sure I have ever seen someone risk so much or so little. Oklahoma fair worker arrested, charged with fraud on accepting bribes on Hello Kitty dolls. Well, okay. Oklahoma news station News on 6 reports that a man working at a game booth at the Tulsa State Fair allowed patrons to bribe him with money in exchange for Hello Kitty dolls. The man, Frank uh, Fakima, was arrested, yes, arrested, when an undercover Tulsa police officer struck a deal with him for $40. If the officer popped a balloon with a dart, he would automatically get the highest prize at the booth, the Hello Kitty doll. According to the deputy, the agreement represents a serious breach of fair prize protocol. I didn't know. Let's be honest, those Did things you get fair... They're they they're worth like forty cents, even the really big, impressive looking one. Did he violate the Cardi code? <laughs> you broke the code of the Cardi. <laughs> really, let's be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. The problem with this was not that he was doing this. The problem is that he was pocketing the money. Yeah. If he was going, look, give, give me forty bucks, and I'll give you the Hello Kitty, and putting it in the till, no problem. The fact that it was going in his pocket is why they're upset. They had a sting for this. This was such a problem. It. Yeah, I didn't know you needed a sting for this. I know it's not that cocaine shit. It's not the meth. No, no, it's the it's the illegal trafficking of Hello Kitty dolls. That's where we need our cops to undercover. I. <laughs> you know, I know the games are bullshit. I've played those carnival games. They're utter bullshit. It's an entirely unethical enterprise. But do you really need to have cops patrolling it to make sure everything's on the up? Oh. I mean, probably I, not. This and hello, this guy. I don't know that this is the best use of your tax dollars. And imagine this poor bastard in lockup. What are you in for? I was giving away a little kitty. He's in. Do you get me a Hello Kitty? <laughs> God, Dara. Jesus Christ. I love Hello Kitty, man. Could you get me one of those? Okay, I thought you were going someplace else with that. No. Thank Just how funny would it be if you're like embarrassed to say what you did and you're in jail and your cellmate's like, damn, could you get, could you hook me up? Could be unexpected. People in jail might like Hello Kitty. There's that jail in Japan that has a whole mascot. mascot yeah, it's Rod Blagojevich hair. Uh, okay, Terry in the channel says, if he's intelligent, he'd tell his cellmates it was about China Cat. That's, that's, that's not bad. 
So anyway, Hello Kitty doesn't even have a mouth, so I don't know how useful she'd be in prison. So anyway, in thinking things through, it's one of those I've tried to. Yeah, I've come up with ideas for events I could do or or things I could you know do for the show, but. A few seconds into coming up with the idea, I think about, wait a minute, here's the extrapolation. Here's all the bad places this could go. And I go, probably shouldn't do that because people are awful. And this one is kind of the epitome of why are you doing this? People are awful. Naked haunted house. Invites you to face your fears at once. Are you bored with traditional haunted houses? Do you yawn at the prospects of a teenage zombie jumping out from behind a curtain to scream in your face? Find yourself checking your watch while these scary clown juggles and skulls in front of you? Lucky for you, a haunted house in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania has found a new way to scare their unscarable customers. A naked haunted house. Yes, to enter the haunted house in the Naked and Scared Challenges, participants must first strip down. Dress code is either nude or, quote, prude with underwear. Simultaneously facing their fears of public nudity, being in close proximity to strangers' genitals, and possibly getting peed on. According to the events website, there's an additional charge, cleaning charge, if we scare the piss out of you. You must be 18 to participate, obviously. How does one come up with this without the idea of just every single kind of sexual assault charge? being flung about within the first five seconds. Well, the thing about it is, if they're not able to wear a costume or a mask, how are they supposed to protect themselves from the evil spirits? That's what Halloween's all about. They're all going to wind up possessed, <laughs> naked and possessed. You're going a completely different place with this than where I'm going with this. Oh, apparently it got canceled. Well, good. Samantha Brown, get out of here. Your house is haunted by a vagina. <laughs> well, this is how you wind up with a haunted vagina. If, you go to the haunted house, vagina waving about. That is just, you're just asking. It is not. A, okay, it might also be Day of the Dead, but let me tell you, Kitty, something. Halloween is a Celtic tradition. It's based on the, the pagan festival of Samhain, and it's always the day before All Souls Day. Or as Ghostbusters say it. Or as Ghostbusters all Hallows say it. Eat. Or instead of Samhain, instead, as Ghostbusters say it, Samhain. I know. They did that on Supernatural, too, and I <laughs> got really upset. Yeah. But, and the idea is that you wear a mask so that the evil spirits don't recognize you. That's that's Halloween. That's why we wear costumes. Halloween Irish people. I, I know my shit. I kind of understand what they were getting, what they were going for here, because, yeah, it can be kind of scary. I don't there are a lot of people I don't want to see naked. I don't want to be anywhere near them when they're naked. Lots and lots of people. I'm pretty sure people no, I mean, with this and they feel mutual. It's usually dark in a haunted house. But how could someone not see how this could go horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, because you're going to get seconds. Groped. You're going to get groped in the dark. In and moments. It's going to get bad. This is just begging for everything to go fucking wrong. Yeah, there's a billion ways this could go horribly awry. You know how long it took me to figure that out? A minute, if that. Yeah. Well, apparently it's been canceled. Well, yeah, but the, the, the very fact they came up with the idea to begin with Let's do this. We're doing it. We're going it. We're taking this. We're running with it. How you come up with that idea? Like, are the people working the haunted house naked, too? Because then it's just a dark house full of naked people. <laughs> That's just kind of a rave. Like, that's a whole different kind of party. Uh, <laughs> OK, Xterra, that's not a doorknob. That's also not a doorknob. <laughs> sign a waiver? Bullshit sign a waiver. It's OK. You can't sign a waiver. Sign a rape waiver? Yeah, you can't do that. 
Yeah, you can't sign a section. They can't ask you to sign a sexual assault waiver. No, that doesn't happen. You're pretty much never, ever going to get away with that. Nope. That's that's not how that works. Uh, I mean, if if you want to put on like haunted Playboy Mansion, that's a whole other kettle of fish, you know, like, cool. That's kind of an interesting concept, actually, now that I think about it. But it's a whole other thing. Speaking of not thinking things through, have you ever actually, the minute the words come out of your mouth, you realize you've said something stupid. You wish you could put the words back in, but something stupid has come out of your mouth and it's out there and you must live with it. How long have we been doing this bit? (laughs) Well, I think... This this uh, the the, pro- the big problem comes in when people say the stupid thing and don't realize they should not have said it and they double down on it. Yeah. And this one's from Saudi like, Arabia. Say Congress right now. Oh yeah. This is a perfect idea. We're gonna shut everything down and they're gonna love us for it. Actually, we all think you're dicks. No, you love us. No. So, um, this comes from Saudi Arabia and this is, I, I, I dare you to make less sense. Saudi Arabian, Saudi, Saudi Arabian cleric says female drivers risk damaging ovaries. A conservative Saudi Arabian cleric said women who drive risk damaging their ovaries and bearing children with clinical problems. Um, A campaign calling for women to defy the ban of protest drive on 26 October has sped rapidly online over the past week and gained support. An interview published Friday, Sheikh uh, Salah bin Saad al-Lohadin, I think I said that right. If I did, I'm amazed. A judicial advisor to an uh, association of Gulf psychologists said women aiming to overturn the ban should, quote, Put reason ahead of their hearts, emotions, and passions. Lohayden's strong uh, uh, endorsement of the ban demonstrates how entrenched the opposition to women driving with conservative Saudis. Quote, if a woman drives the car, not out of pure necessity, that could have negative psychological impacts as functional and physiological medical studies show that it automatically affects the ovaries and pushes the pelvis upwards. It could have a negative psychological effect on your ovaries. That's why we find those who regularly drive have children with clinical problems of Here's varying degrees. Ovaries don't have their own brains. No. So ovaries can't actually have psychological. Your ovaries can't get depressed. Well, parent, but like, they, your ovaries can make you depressed and they often do, but they can't get depressed on their own. Apparently, they're saying that it pushes the pelvis upward, thereby affecting the ov- and that would cause children to have clinical problems. The entire rest of the world says what? Uh, yeah, my yeah, the lady's been driving for like ever. And they're having kids, and the kids are relatively okay. And yeah. so, I, I do have to point out, D.A. Scott said, don't you think they're overreacting? Oh. Oh. I can't top that. No, we can't. We, it's, I think that's the definitive comment on the subject. Yeah. I, I don't think, okay, if you're a cleric and you've got a degree in theology and all that stuff, great. Why don't you leave the medicine, the physical shit to the people who study the medicine? It's a different field. How do body work? Yeah. Well, I mean. Let's see, he, he does. Oh, this is even better. It's not like this is a problem unique to the region. We still have people trying to teach creationism in public schools here. He did not not cite specific medical studies to support his arguments. Gosh, I find that shocking. I mean, there are so many. So where do you get your information? Straight out of my ass. I just reach around. 
I, I grab something, I pull, and then that's where, you know, straight out of there. That's that's where I, I mean, I drive like 40 minutes each way to and from work every day. And my ovaries are like back here. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of hard to sit in a chair because I end up like leaning on them, you know? They push up against my spine from all that driving. You know, I would think you would at least... And I have two I have two uteruses now because the seatbelt has <laughs> some half. <laughs> it's the unknown tragedy of our time. Double uterus syndrome. <laughs> and finally, uh, this is one of those stories where I'm like, this really had to happen again. Out. This shouldn't have happened once, much less again. But the fact that it's. If it happens this, if it happens twice, that means it's happened more than twice. And I am officially fucking terrified. Well, two is not a trend. Statistically speaking, I don't care about statistics. I, this just pilots fall asleep on long haul flight to UK. Two pilots on a British airliner on a long haul flight fell asleep in the cockpit, leaving the packed jet traveling unsupervised on autopilot. One of the pilots on board the Airbus 330 flight to Britain, name of the airline, was not disclosed. Eventually woke up and aroused his colleague, but neither knew how long they had been asleep. And for those of you who don't understand, autopilot is not you push the button, the plane flies where it's supposed to go and lands. Autopilot, it's not like it is an airplane where an inflatable guy comes up and autopilot is kind of cruise control. You point yeah. it in a direction, you push the button, it keeps you at the same altitude and airspeed and going the same direction. Generally kind of how that works. But this is a big problem in the airline industry that you have these pilots and flight attendants who are working insane shifts being, you know, they're carting all over the world. They're not getting enough time to get proper sleep. Like this has been a problem for a while. Yeah. It even says in the article fatigue is a serious issue. needs careful yeah. oversight. But on I'm pretty much of the, isn't that why we have a co-pilot? You'd like to think that they would sleep in shifts. Yeah, that would be the whole point. You have one guy sleeping, the other guy flying the plane. I could live with that. Or both of them flying the plane. I could live with that. Both of them sleeping. Not so much. No, no, that's and I'm not. I don't like to fly like me on an airplane is like I'm really nervous and anxious the whole time. I do not like it. I try to sleep as much as possible. So this comforts me none. Dodger just said, so they were both plain tired. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, I... <laughs> Okay, Dave, Jesus, take the stick. Yeah, that's not how that works either. But yeah, I and people are like, well, they put it on autopilot. No. Oh, it just it just could. And if they didn't know how long they fell asleep, here's the possibility. They could have just kept right on fucking going. Yeah, like what happens if neither of them woke up and they totally missed their landing? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to have cool. a slight delay because uh, we appear to be in Tasmania. I know what happened. What happened? And they fucked it up. They fucked what up? They both fell asleep so that the plane would go off course and they would wind up on the Lost Island. They were chosen and they fucked it up. There are a lot of people saying that um, the ending of Breaking Bad was like a direct fuck you to the ending of Lost. Yeah, it was. Because of the last shot. And it was beautifully done. And things getting really neatly tied up. Yep. And a lot of people took to Twitter because people are idiots. I don't understand why you'd have to do this. And like Rage tweeted at Damon Lindelof 
because they liked the end of Breaking Bad so much that they decided the best reaction to that was to get on Twitter and be like, yeah, you fucking suck, David Lindelof, with your show that ended three years ago. I'm still bitter about it. These are geeks. Just be happy you like the new show, you These asshole. These are geeks. Like kick somebody over three years ago. These are geeks. I just, I just find it sad. We don't, I don't even have to elaborate on that. These are geeks. I'm just oh, yeah. saying, public oh. service announcement. If, if you see something that you enjoy and your immediate reaction is, wow, I enjoyed that. I'm going to go shit all over somebody who did this other thing that I didn't enjoy because of this thing I enjoyed. Something ain't right up there. This is uh, this. OK, this is like Langoliers, the home game. This is not how you do that. You're not going to wind up in yesterday if you fall asleep while flying. You have to have that spatial anomaly first. You got really mad at me for saying the one episode of Doctor Who I'd ever seen was the one that where the Langoliers ate the wed- wedding in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it was. It really. Yeah, the 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 uh, like there were Langoliers. And I'm like, well, they kind of were, except they were giant bat Langoliers instead of weird bowling ball Langoliers. It was different. It was a paradox. The whole different thing. It seemed Langolier esque to me. Don't get me started. We'll go. I'll go right back to the numbers, man. It's not my fault that you have not the cognitive ability to accept the numbers. I can't help it if you're unenlightened. What do the numbers mean? Eh, fuck it. We don't care. That's not enlightened. That's not fuck it. We don't care. That was never the answer. That's like, oh, well, they were dead all along. They were not dead all along, for God's sake. That's just lazy viewing. Uh, lazy viewing. It was a show that required work. It was a show that required your active participation. And if you were not willing to give it that. I did give it my active fucking participation. They never explained the goddamn numbers. They did. They did. And I've explained this to you about 16 times. So many times have I explained this to you. You're still claiming they didn't explain the polar bears. They explained that like three separate times. They actually, it was a cut scene. No, they explained it on the show. Mm. When Sawyer was in the cage. And there was one of the old Dharma videos and like in canon on the show, they explain the polar bears like at least twice. Are we really going to nerd fight for the rest of the segment? Well, if you're going to be wrong for the rest of the segment, then yeah. What have we How's learned this to... week? Well, apparently we didn't learn what the numbers mean. We've learned that bears can be recent with. And there are bars in Alaska that are really racist about <laughs> bears. <laughs> That was a very polite bear. It was like, okay, well, if you don't want me here, I'm just take the better part of valor. I'm going to take my business elsewhere. (laughs) If it's like that, then. I didn't realize this was the Polar's only watering hole. I'll just go to Applebee's. (laughs) I don't know why my bear talks like that, but. I don't know why he'd want to go to Applebee's either. They have martinis. They have apple teenies. Oh, they have mudslides. I think bears would like mudslides. I just call it a hunch. Um, we've learned that so just even in the 21st century, we have not learned. Wow, some things are a bad idea to, to not not only the stereotypes bad, merchandising stereotypes are probably worse. Yeah. Don't don't try to make money off a stereotype. You're probably going to end up losing money. Or at least go retro and just sell Earring Magic Ken. <laughs> that was a way better gay stereotype doll. That one looked cheap and cheesy. Was that the one with the one earring? Yeah, Earring Magic Ken. Yeah, earring he had magic. Like a lavender leather vest and no shirt. <laughs> at least that was kind of subtle. No, not really. Well, they didn't exactly use the... Mm. No, but if you took one look at them, you were like, wow, they did gay Ken. Cool. 
Yeah. Because, um, I mean, if we're being honest, Barbie's kind of a bitch to him, so it's about time. <laughs> We've learned that there are things, perhaps, risk should equal reward. Yes. If you're risking your freedom on a $50,000 haul, that you're going to get a kickback on something, that's a risk. 40 bucks for a little, for uh, Hello Kitty? No. And also, why the fuck are we having fairground stings? Jesus Christ. I know. Can, isn't there anything else we can... Use that manpower on. You got like 20 yards away outside the county fair. People are fucking drunk and driving home. Put the yeah. officers there. Maybe concentrate on that. Maybe have a guy on the gate giving breathalyzers. Yeah, seriously. Um, we learned that. Some sometimes you need to think through your ideas. To their logical conclusion, which is if you put naked people in a dark house, legal yeah. action will ensue. Rightly so. And they won't be protected from the evil spirits. Then you'll get naked possessed people and haunted vaginas. And nobody wants that. You have just... I, I, I Again, the asylum right now is making notes. Like, naked possessed people. We could sell this shit. We've learned that... And I'm telling you, the haunted Playboy Mansion... That idea is fucking bank. <laughs> We've Zombie learned. Playboy bunnies? Tell me that's not every nerd boy's fantasy. We've learned that driving will apparently alter your uteri ovary. Yeah, all the plumbing. Big old mess. If you're a woman and you drive, your kid's going to be an asshole or something. I don't know. I, I can't even make sense of that. Think before the maybe did the words come out of your mouth. Think first, then make word. Brain, then word. OK, not the other way around. Are you kidding? That's like my bread and butter. <laughs> if I thought before I spoke, I wouldn't have this job. <laughs> And finally tonight, we've learned every goddamn thing on the planet has an alarm clock built into it now. Maybe use one if you're flying a fucking plane. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I that really that's really weird me out because I am not a good flyer. And I mean, not that I fly often, but I I really want to think that there's somebody awake up there who is knows it what turbulence doing. or is the pilot having a bad dream <laughs> chasing rabbits yes <laughs> 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 oh that's sweet he thinks he's out playing 